Hello, this is Sandra Brown of Happiness, Past 60. And uh, I was sharing my childhood memories in the 50s where I lived in the housing project. And I didn't realize it was going to go into two parts, and now I see it's going into the th three parts. It really was, I wouldn't think there was that much to share, but there seems to be. All right, where we lived, like most of you, we had a jug store with a soda fountain. I was trying to think of the different drinks that we would get there. Chocolate Pepsis. What's that red one? Oh, no. um, it was just such a big treat. We didn't have much of any place to go to. And they had, of course, a counter with the candy in it, but they were in jars, and you had to go up there and tell them um, what you wanted, and he would put it in a bag. His name was Joe Kay, the man who owned the drugstore. And um, <laughs> he was not very patient with us kids now. I'm sure he was, but he probably was sick of little kids coming in with this little bitty bit of change and they're trying to make up their mind and picking out every little piece of candy. Well, you've heard of all the candies they've had because I've noticed that you can go to several places, but one would be Cracker Barrel and they have all the old candy there. So, you know, if, if you had a quarter, that's 25 decisions. I remember one was a big jar of what they called Sin Sins. Do you remember that? I don't know what flavor that was. They were black. I did not like licorice, so I hated licorice. Hmm. Well, anyways, and one of the things I loved there was the paper dolls. I'd go back there. He, they didn't have a huge selection, but when they get in something new, I don't know that I really had the money to buy the paper dolls. I just remember looking at them. Maybe I did at times. And then there was magazines that you wouldn't buy, but you go back there and look at them. And I think it was Ripley's Believe It or Not. Oh my goodness, I love that. That just fascinated me. I mean, now we see all this crazy stuff on Facebook and on the TV, but we just didn't have all that stuff. So it was just amazing. You know, the Chinese, Siamese twins and stuff like that. Or some elephant head or whatever. <laughs> so we would look at the books and just put them back. Now I see they have a place called Rips, Ripley's, believe it or not, that you can go to. Well, we of course had the ice cream man, but the ice cream man we had actually they did, didn't even have a truck. That wasn't until later on. It was just, and I knew most of them, it would be a man or a young boy who was a bicycle, and then in front of the bicycle was built on, it was an ice chest. And uh, he had some kind of a little bell, I think, on the bicycle that you, he was squeezing. as he And he had to, poor guy, kids in the heat of the day and they had to uh, pedal that bike all over and, and uh, it didn't look like it was easy to pedal it looked rather heavy I think they had hot ice in there because I remember when they'd open it up all the steam would come out but um, you know when we would hear that we didn't have air conditioning remember and really didn't have much room in any kind of a freezer to keep anything, you know, popsicles and things. Um, I always liked popsicles that were red, and uh, I liked fudge bars. My mom always liked those push-ups with the sherbet in. But uh, she always gave me money for those. All right, let's see. Oh, another thing they did that was different. Yeah, spraying for mosquitoes. <laughs> well, my father would search every night during the summer. He would search my bedroom for mosquitoes before I go to bed. He would shake the curtains, 
and the blinds and everything to make sure there was none in there. And he would had a fly swatter and he'd kill them all. And then right before I go to bed, he'd have me get in bed and put the blanket over my head. <laughs> and he had this spray thing, you know, he went like this. And on the end of it, it had a, a container that held mosquito. Something that killed the mosquitoes, I don't know. Oh, that had to be really good for me. <laughs> <laughs> but he would get in there and he'd go, all right, put your put the blanket over here. And then he would spray my whole room. Well, you can only stay under the blanket so long. Oh, my goodness. But the big reason for me why they did it is I had a, I would get such a gigantic reaction over mosquito bites that lasted, well, years. Yeah, years. But it just it finally just went away. But if if a mosquito bit me like up here above my eyebrow or anything, it would gradually the swelling go down and close my whole eye up. And I always had a fear I'd get bit in both eyes and I couldn't see anything. Uh, and I would just get if, if I get a little bite on my arm, it wouldn't just be a little bump. It would be huge. Like my whole arm would be swelled up and hot and itchy. So, yeah, I, I would, it make me look so ugly after get bit in the eye. I just didn't want to go. And I couldn't go anywhere like that. And my mother, bless her heart, she didn't know any different. She used to take boric acid and put it in a cup with a cotton ball and just keep swabbing my eye with it. I don't think that's good for your eye. <laughs> well, I guess we survived it. And I remember being in my bedroom, looking out at the sun, things that we did. We're looking out at the sun and see, I'd be with my girlfriends, see how long you keep your eye open, look straight at the sun without blinking. And the tears would be running down her face. Those crazy things that we did then. Oh, let's see. Oh, and talk about spraying for mosquitoes. Then the, I guess it would be the county. They would uh, bring a truck out that had this mosquito spray that would be shooting out the back. And they'd drive around Columbia Center with that to kill mosquitoes. Well, what did us kids do? We got on our bicycle and we, and we would ride behind that truck in the spray. Wasn't that fun? <laughs> If you guys had the same thing happen to me, let me know. I'm just, just wondering if I, I, we were only crazy people that did this. Okay, I'm trying to uh, see what else I'm playing. Oh yeah, it's playing outside. I got a few little notes back here. As far as playing outside, we would do that a lot. I would, I did play with my cutouts a lot, probably more than most kids. But then all of a sudden it's like, oh, I'm tired of this. And uh, I, I probably left scraps of, from where I've been cutting out all over the bed. And I would go outside and we play. We we played hard. We had such a great time. But we'd be so involved playing, it would start getting dark. So we would go under the uh, street lights and uh, play under there. Well, I was supposed to be home at dark. When summertime, sometimes it would be 9 o'clock before it got dark. And we would play things like uh, statue and what we do we swing somebody around and then let them loose and then whatever position they fell in you have to freeze like that and then somebody was the uh, buyer and he came to buy a statue and he would look at all of us and the one that he liked he picked them and they got to be I think the statue buyer something like that Trips. But then I remember my mom yelling, Sandy Lee. And uh, off we would go. And if we, if we didn't hear her, she would come and she wouldn't be very happy. So we, we hurried up and went home. Oh, where we lived, we, it was, we had grass, of course, but there was a lot of stickers because they sure didn't spray for that or dandelions. And we went barefooted a lot. So sometimes 
I don't know what would cause this. We get in sticker fights. I got stupid. And we'd pick up the whole plant. So you'd have a stock with all these stickers on the end. And then we'd chase each other and throw them. And then we'd stick on our backs. Very smart kids we were. <laughs> and getting stickers in our feet all the time. But you know, I have been read a little bit. Well, I didn't really read into it. I want to look into it more. About going barefooted on the grass is supposed to be really good for you. Any, if you know anything about that, let me know. But they say that's, that's very healthy for you. So I'm thinking about taking my shoes off and going out there. Our grass is so nice. So I was really good at getting stickers out of people's feet. I, I kind of enjoyed that. I think I should have been a, a doctor. But didn't get so sidetracked with boyfriends. I could have done a lot of stuff. <laughs> but I did like to get the stickers out with tweezers. All right, now, I'll tell you about some of our neighbors and things. And my grandma and grandpa. My grandma and grandpa, they lived, it, it was my mother's parents. Their last name was Johnson. Mary and Walter Johnson. And they lived down the hill and down the street a little ways. Everywhere we lived, because we always rented at that time. We never owned a home. And they never owned a home. Uh, that was just a luxury that was beyond us, that anyone would own a home. But they were always either in the connecting apartment or right close by us, always. Now, when we lived in Columbia Center, my brother Corky did live with us. So it ended up toward the end, there was... Corky went, joined the Navy, my oldest brother. And um, Neil, at one point, I think while we were still there, he joined the Army. And my uh, sister slept in a crib in my parents' room. All right, so there was um, right across from us. I should go back to Grandma and Grandpa. Okay, Grandpa. Grandpa had they used to call it hardening of the arteries but you know I wonder if it was just Alzheimer's I just don't know but they called it hardening the arteries and he seemed to be okay until it come he had a uh, it's a hemorrhoid operation and I don't know if it was the anesthetic or or just the stress of it or what it was but he just never did seem the same after that. He started going downhill. And his mind got really bad. But when his mind was not bad, Grandpa could fix anything. He was very mechanically inclined. Um, he had an old, I think it was an old Ford and it sat outside the house. Well, they had to take the keys, I think, away from him because he couldn't drive anymore. Well, one day, <laughs> my, bro my brother had been down there, Grandma and Grandpa's Corky. He came home and he said to my mom, he goes, Mom, you will not believe what Grandpa did now because he was constantly doing something. He said, he took the motor out of the car and he put newspapers all over the yard and he washed every part, every piece of the motor. He took it totally apart and it's all over the yard in pieces. Well, there is nobody in my family that could put this car back together. How are you going to sell it? How are you going to move it? The streets were very narrow. And you, I mean, the streets were not made for anybody owning a car. But that at this time, people, a few people were getting a car. So they didn't know what to do. Well, lo and behold, Grandpa put it all back together. He put the whole engine back together and then put it in the car. And I don't know who was holding the keys. Maybe it was Grandma. I don't know. But 
it ran and it ran good <laughs> I guess that you know if you did have Alzheimer's or dementia the old part of your brain the things that you remember from past they seem to stay but like learning something new that just doesn't seem to stick with people so something there it, it really stuck with him all right I'm looking up here oh yeah now if grandpa was before his mind got bad if he's gonna go fishing I think he went with uh, Corky and Neil they would go fishing well he had these probes that he would stick in the yard all over and then it would he would plug it in and it was electric and then maybe they still have these things I don't know I'm not a fisherman but then all these worms would come up out of the ground grody right and then they just go over and they just pick them up and put them in the bucket and go fishing and when he was always picking dandelions out of the yard with a long pole with something on the end of it but he would and he would wear a oh gosh what was it those silver like hard hats I guess they were in the jungle or something I don't know he would always wear that because he was balding on the top probably that was why all right, so I've got hold. I'm holding back some of the good stuff for you. All right, let's see. My neighbors, my neighbor, our neighbor across the street from us. I just love this sweet little old Christian lady. My family weren't Christians. They didn't know the Lord at all. But this little old lady lived there. We called her Grandma Elia. I don't know how you spell that. I just remember that name. And I don't remember her first name. And she had a son that lived with her called Elmer. Elmer was a sweetheart too. And he loved his mother. But Elmer, his face had been burnt real bad. And I don't know if it was just from that or he was, I don't know that he was slow mentally, but it, it affected his speech. Um, but we just loved Elmer and we loved Grandma Elia. And if my mom was cooking something sometimes, she would send food over to Grandma Elia. And uh, oh, she would be like, oh, bless your heart. You know, one of those kind of old ladies. And, and then she would always have to send something back. We didn't want her to do that, but she always had to send a little something back. And she'd have Elmer bring it over. Grandma Elia did not understand about TV. They had a little TV. And she would watch, I remember it was Arthur Godfrey that I was talking about before. She would be watching him. And they had these advertisements. One of them was the Lucky Strike cigarette boxes. And these, <laughs> these girls would be inside the box with just their legs sticking out. And they would, there must have been holes they could see out of. <laughs> but they would dance across the floor, you know, and have the song about Lucky Stark. <laughs> but they also had the little Alka-Seltzer guy, that little cartoon, that little Alka-Seltzer guy. Alka-Seltzer, speedy Alka-Seltzer, something like that. And he would dance and think, oh, Grandma Elia just thought he was the cutest little man. She thought he could see her, and she thought Arthur Godfrey could see her. And she and Elmer, her sons, go, Mom, they can't see you. And she goes, Elmer, they can. They're looking right at me. No matter where I move, they're looking right at me. She just could not understand it. So she would dress up for the Alka-Seltzer man and for Arthur Godfrey. She could put on her best dress and fix her hair up when he was going to come on. That's the sweetest thing. All right, I'm looking at my time. I'm getting up to almost 20 minutes, so I will sign off. And I've got a lot of really good stuff I was going to tell you, too. I'm kind of saving it. All right. So, and yeah. So I have some questions to ask you if you remember some of these things. So God bless all of you. It's uh, raining. It did rain early here today. 
and I went out to breakfast with some lady friends of mine and uh, just came back and I thought I would do this part three. So I hope you enjoy it. Make sure you comment, okay? All right, bye-bye.